Good morning from Colorado Custom Coachworks. I don't really know what I'm doing today. Is it Sunday today, Eric? I believe it's Sunday today. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sunday's a great day to, uh, you know, give thanks to the uh, gods of uh, van life and bus life by uh, doing some service and uh, <laughs> making a prayer that we get some straight lines out of this thing. Um, so uh, tell us what you're doing today, Eric. Uh, well, we're starting to lay out everything for the bathroom and for the closet and where the bed's gonna line up and uh, get everything all squared up and uh, properly uh, aligned and uh, get our rest of our framing, uh, fit, rough framing finished up. Today. Excellent, excellent. And uh, would you tell us about your channel a little bit so anyone sure, who's yeah. watching can uh, check you out and see what you're up to? I would love that. Yeah. Uh, our, my name is Vanderboom, but our so our uh, our page is called Wanderboom. Uh, my wife and I have just started full time in uh, about a month ago in our uh, converted shuttle bus and uh, from Wisconsin, and uh, decided to swing by and help Jax out here for a couple of weeks. And awesome. Some, uh, do some framing and use some of my skills. Cool. Well, along with uh, Justin, who you guys met. Uh, Eric is up for some work on the road. So if anybody's watching this and has a little project, get a hold of uh, Wanderboom. Yep, yep. Or on Instagram, Wanderbooming. That's right. And uh, he's got years of experience. And you guys will see throughout this build, his uh, uh, skills will speak for himself. Just like mine will. <laughs> Speaking of my skills, I don't know where I put that thing. It's far for the course if the you thing, haven't noticed. You know that, that one thing. <laughs> that one thing. Uh, I'm going to cut some holes in the bus. So this bus is going to be a little bit different from the last bus. I'm going to have city water and a gravity water fill. Um, that just means hookups for all you guys who are familiar. I'm, I'm sure most of you guys are familiar. I'm the one who's not familiar. I'm also going to have a, a 30 amp service. Again, hookup. On the other side, i got to drill some more holes. So uh, I guess this video today is drilling holes. You know? Drill, baby, drill on the side of the bus. Also, I, I, I get this uh, repeated question, how do I survive on the road, uh, all that. Excuse the air uh, compressor. I did an article with uh, Project Van Life. Uh, I think it was called 21 Nomads, how they make money on the road. If you're curious, you can check that out. Uh, just a brief background, uh, in case you guys are just tuning in. I have a background in uh, travel hosting. So I've gotten paid to travel and do uh, web series type shows and things like that. Also, previous to that, I was slaving away in this terrible bar. Uh, so, without further ado, let's get to work. All right, guys, I think we just figured out how to properly <laughs> square up. Now, we're going from the floor, and Eric came up with this amazing idea. Now, he's gonna, uh, we, we were reversed before, right? Yeah, but this, just, this just, is the first. Uh, just yeah, for the, the sake, I mean, he, I was holding and he was up here, but Basically, just hold that flush to the uh, other square. See that? Look at that. And then your line is is on that side, right where that little pencil mark is. And then we just uh, turned it 90 degrees. You got that one? Yep, I got this one. So then we just turned it 90 degrees. It, I, I think this is the best way I've seen so far. Because um, we are squaring it, we are not leveling it. And then you just take that one, he holds it flush like so. And then boom, and then you just you know, and then you just cross the uh, cross the line. So, uh, excellent way to do that, man. Yep. We were just talking about how how uh, people are off with their they, you know they try to level it. And you squared it to the floor, right? And has a very precise measurement. Right. So and again, with the curved ceiling and everything else, I mean, how do you do that otherwise? You know, you really got to just transfer your points using what you got. Yep, exactly. <laughs> I got it marked. That's where my water fill is going. Uh, hopefully it works out. Uh, two by four should be on the other side, on the inside of it. Uh, this is the cutout part. There is a little bump here, no big deal. I can uh, put some butyl tape or uh, silicone and that should be just fine. It looks like a good fit there. Might have to uh, shave down a little bit, but let's, uh, let's see how much spray foam insulation I got. This isn't throughout, but I got, you know, about a good two and a half average, I'd say. That's like almost three. But yeah, I got quite a bit of spray foam here, as you guys can see. Yeah, almost three inches right there, so. Got a good deal. 
700 bucks. Now, like I said, I took wood shop in middle school. That's it. I took auto shop in high school. You know how much construction experience I have? Zero. So for those people giving me a hard time, just remember that. Now, I did figure out something smart. Eh? You guys probably already know this if you guys are handymen, construction guys, people like Steve or Mike. I was like, how am I going to cut a nice little, you know, uh, rectangle when I put the wood on the other side? You know what I figured out? Well, just feast your eyes on this. This is like breaking news for me, but, you know, common sense for you. Alright, let's get this thing out of here. I put the wood back in. Huh? Pretty smart, right? Alright, here we go. Here's the hole. <laughs> Alright, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is a sneak peek of uh, what, we, uh, what we're dealing with here. This is going to become the wall and also the bed frame. Uh, that's, you know, we already talked about that. That's a self-explainer. If you don't know what that is, you haven't been watching enough of my videos. <laughs> but uh, this will be, yeah, this will be mattress. But it's fun because I just made this little hole for the uh, water inlet while uh, Eric's been inside doing what he does best. And uh, this is quickly coming along. I mean, framed all this out. Added some uh, some wood there, and uh, before my very own eyes, I might have a place to poop inside my bus, which is not inside a treasure chest. So no more magical treasures inside the treasure chest. <laughs> Great news! I did not burn out the pump motor. It was actually due for a new filter. So for those of people asking, oh my gosh, you're running veggie oil. You're going to go through so many filters. Uh, to fill up this uh, 120 gallon tank, so far I have used three filters. Three. At about $8 each, $10 each, $12 each, I forget. So somewhere around $30 in filter for uh, 120 gallons. So I paid $30 to go 1,000 miles. I think that's even better than a Tesla. Do you guys ever get a little scatterbrain when you're working on a project? There's like 10 million things to do and you, uh, I don't know, never finish any of them, but then you start a bunch of them. Anyways, speaking of uh, another project to start, this is a new seat. That's the old seat. Long story short, that's 11 inches. That's 11 inches. I'm a tall dude. I might take this mounting plate and put it on that and uh, add an extra three inches to it. I don't know. That's just what I'm thinking right now. Sounds like a good idea. Uh, also, this seat, I would like to replace the uh, uh, upholstery for it. I'm definitely not going to take this off and put it on there. That, that belongs in the trash. Um, the only thing wrong with this one is the, the armrest thing isn't uh, intact 100%. Not really sure. I took it off, tried to fix it. You know, didn't quite work out. <laughs> An advantage of having this one on here, besides the other height, is that I could put another <clears throat> self-powered sub under the seat, I think. I'd have to double check the dimensions, but it is a possibility. If not, you know, a little extra headroom, uh, you know, it's not a bad thing. We got Wander Boom in here uh, tackling the interior while I'm playing around outside. And uh, it, this it looks like it's coming together. Yeah, and we yeah. just had a nice little conversation before, and I just want to share my gratitude with everyone watching this video. You're an amazing dude, and thank you so much for coming by. It uh, means a lot to me. No problem. So, thank my you. Pleasure. Good fun. <laughs> and have more fun as we go? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're getting, right, we're getting right into the fun stuff, guys. This is the part where it drastically changes right into an adventure mobile before your very own eyes. Now, I'm out here, said I was playing around, but I'm doing some pretty serious work. This is some pretty, like, you know, safe stuff I'm doing here. So, um, I took off the base plate of that, took off the base plate of that, I'm gonna bump it up three inches, and what I'm gonna do is weld these holes uh, shut. Uh, the reason being, the new holes are gonna be close by, and I don't really feel like being ejected 
<laughs> having an ejection seat in the front, God forbid something happens. So I'm gonna make it nice and safe, weld it all, cut new holes, all that fun stuff. We'll bump it up and then I'm moving back a little bit because I'm, I'm tall and I got long legs. I'm just gonna clean this off because what I learned was you have to weld with a clean piece of metal there. Also, I don't think I've ever done a tiny house tour, but uh, there are some fellow travelers who's actually, who have actually been traveling a year longer than I have. It's starting to rain right now. Tiny house expedition, Christian and Alexis. So we're gonna talk to these guys about some traveling stuff. Not so much a tour, because you guys probably have, what, two dozen tours online at least? <laughs> cool. Well, come on in. All right. Hey, welcome. Hey, guys. Pretty good, I'm just working away inside. Just trying to keep busy. We get it. Yeah, so. Our, would, our would, tiny house is partially in travel mode right now. <laughs> awesome. Just wanna let everyone know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and would you guys introduce yourselves and the, uh, what you're doing, especially like the documentary stuff, whatever you can kind of say about that and the channel and everything? Absolutely, um, so I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian, <laughs> we call ourselves Tiny House Expedition. And we are a traveling tiny house project we do documentary filmmaking and community education about all aspects of tiny living, including communities, um, legal obstacles, and solutions. And uh, we just live and breathe tiny everything every day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we do. And, yeah. Uh, we just did an event, um, so we're traveling through. So I thought we'd stop by and say hello. Cool. And as I pointed out, we're in travel mode because maximum cuteness is not achieved at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and on the note of traveling, you guys are now the most traveled tiny house, right? Yeah, how many miles have you put on? So far, it's just just over 50,000. We just hit 50,000 when we got to Leadville, Colorado. Cool. Yeah. You guys are a good 20 more than me. Oh, and I wow. know the pace I've put on over two years and 30-something <laughs> thousand miles, maybe even 35 at this point, including yeah. this bus. It's a lot of money and fuel. It's a lot of where do I park and things like that. So how do you guys deal with a full-time traveling schedule? Because that's, that's an insane amount of miles. It's true. It's like we sometimes we travel a lot, and we stay between a week and two months at different places. Uh, if we're staying in a place less than a week, and we do that multiple times, we start to feel a little crazy. Mm -hmm. So trying to find a balance with travel where you're not running yourself ragged is really important. Mm -hmm. We've gotten better at that for sure. But so we park in a lot of driveways and backyards. <laughs> Networking's awesome. <laughs> I know you can relate. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and then sometimes campgrounds. Um, Hope to do some more boondocking in the future. Mm -hmm. We're gonna get a little solar. Uh, we see at tiny house communities sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, yeah, so that's a big thing. And the yeah, it is tough. Tough sometimes to balance making money, having like some like downtime, and then doing the film work. Uh, it could be pretty crazy. Um, so we just have I think perfected our workflow over time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, does mean arguing sometimes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, how do you guys roll into, well, you, you said you plan in advance some places where you go, and you, you guys, I kind of was like a tumbleweed, honestly. Do you guys ever just kind of, they're like, let's go this way today, and then you just find somewhere to park, or, uh, like, really. pulling a trailer being so long, how does yeah. that work? Yeah. Yeah, usually what happens, well, you know, Alexis usually puts the schedule together for the most part. And um, so she has ideas of where we want to be and some of the people that we want to interview. So what happens is, is that I sometimes knock stuff off the schedule because it's either, you know, it, the timing's not going to work out just right or it's going to take us a day longer to get somewhere than I actually thought. You know, so it's, it's sometimes things like that happen. So it, yeah. it, the, the schedule does change. Um, it's just adding, we try to add a little flexibility yeah. so that if something comes up, like some friends are coming through town, right. that and we this can... this always happens, yeah. Yeah. So it's, we try to, I make it like a six month schedule, and then about a month out is when I firm up, and then within that, there's like a, a solid week of wiggle room yep. that it might totally change, um, or we might just decide to go to the national park for a couple days or something. Mm -hmm. And could you tell us a little bit about the documentary that you guys are doing, or documentary series, I should say? Yeah, um, we have two series. One is Living Tiny Illegally, 
which is the legal obstacles and solutions, particularly zoning for tiny houses on wheels. And that's on our YouTube channel. And then the other one is about the people, culture, and community experience of the movement. And what we want to do is kind of show how tiny living is revolutionizing American housing to the backdrop of what's happening in our economy and insane housing markets. It's almost making it affordable again. Make America affordable again? <laughs> <laughs> Something like, like that, that, right? Yeah. I want that on a hat. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Because it's so expensive. I mean, and you know, I look back and I just wish I would have lived in a van or something yeah. in Venice Beach and would have saved $1,200 a month on rent. So, yeah, yeah totally. it's tough. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Uh, there's no time like the present to go tiny. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. Appreciate the time. And uh, great hanging out uh, past 24 hours and all that stuff. So, yeah, and hope to see you guys on the road. Yeah, yeah same here. Same cool. Here. All right, so I'm ready to weld. I don't know what the heck I'm doing, but luckily we got JT over here to <laughs> make sure I don't burn the whole building down <laughs> or kill myself. Would you give me a quick demonstrate or a quick explanation of how to weld for a beginner? Yeah, so something like this. Honestly, it's probably best to get a backing plate. Okay. Um, that way yeah. you can kind of just fill up the hole. Yep. Um, if you get something that's real thick, it won't stick to it. You can just knock it right off. Don't grind it or anything so it won't stick. Cool. Um, main thing is, as you start welding with this, you just want to be sure that you're getting enough wire because that's a pretty big hole to fill up. So if you feel like you need more wire speed, just crank it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, like I said, it's best to just back it so you can sit there and just fill it up and penetrate real nice. Cool. So uh, that's the grounding cable, if I remember correctly, right? Yep. And uh, a welder uses uh, electricity. Uh, I thought I welded before with a, a flame torch. I think I was totally wrong. Yeah, that's a cutting torch. <laughs> okay. Um, you can sometimes bond things together with a cutting torch, depending yeah. on what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, different welders have different dials. I think there's one for the feed it's of pretty the cable. Much always the same, wire cool. speed and voltage. Okay. Um, and then... Of course, when you have a gas set up, it's always going to be better than using forks cord. Yeah, so the gas is so it doesn't splatter as much and it looks a little bit cleaner. Correctly. Cool. Sweet. All right, guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this. Hopefully, I don't, uh, you know, burn the whole place down. All right. So along with uh, being able to DIY your own rig, these guys will point you in the right direction here. So I'm getting uh, some help from a seasoned veteran here. And uh, we're basically putting a little backing so the weld doesn't fall through, so it can pool up, like you said, and then uh, just, uh, you know, clamped in there. Yep. And cool. Just move both. All right, perfect. Now I need to get uh, some gloves so I can touch that brick once it's uh, <laughs> all heated up and a uh, face shield so I don't uh, burn my eyes out. So we can see a little progression here. That was my first weld. That's butt ugly. The second weld is all right, but I missed the outside corner. So we got JT is going to show us how to properly fill a hole like this. Yeah. Cool. All right, let me try that last one. I think I can nail it here. And you're gonna have popping just because of this back plate. Okay. Because we didn't like grind it, so you're always hitting like a unfinished metal. So you're gonna have that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, but it's good because you know, obviously it doesn't bind a hole. There you go. Yep. Yeah, that didn't uh, adhere at all. So. All right. Cool. <laughs> 